We're going to send it down to Natasha Staniszewski, along with Corey Sarge, and tonight's Flames TV postgame show presented by Original 16. Original 16, a great way to celebrate things done well. Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Flames TV live post game show where the Flames uh, have lost a disappointing one here to the Washington Capitals. 5 2 was the final. Corey Sarich joins me to break this one down. And, Corey, uh, we had two teams here tonight fighting for a playoff spot. They're both in the battle. I thought maybe the Flames could take advantage of a, a tired Capitals team at the end of a five game road trip. It was a sleepy first period, but uh, somehow Washington found a way, and it seemed like Calgary just couldn't get that next goal when they needed it. Yeah, it was a little disjointed tonight. Just all of the chances for the Calgary Flames kind of came in spurts. And uh, there was a lot of whistles tonight. The mm -hmm. game was a little bit longer and drawn out. And that never helps to get your momentum going. But both of these hockey teams have played a lot of hockey as of late. It's almost been every other night for a week and a half for both of these hockey teams. And I know the Calgary Flames are going to get a little longer breather. But again, it'll be a, a very rapid finish to this season as well for both of these teams with all the games that they still have to fit in. Right, so a couple a couple days off for the Flames, but you're right, it has been a busy schedule for them. Uh, let's show you the highlights in this one. Let's show you how it all went down. Uh, like I said, I felt like this one was kind of there for the taking for the Flames during a lot of this uh, game, but it was Washington who got on the board first in this one. Like we said, a bit of a sleepy period, uh, but Dylan Strom here was given some room and he was given a lot of time, and he will blast one past Dustin Wolf, who's making his third straight start. Yeah, it's nice puck movement here by the Washington Capitals and Strom, who initially moves that puck up to the point, just finds the quiet area, gets lost. There's a player in the slot who tracks all the attention, and this kid's been scoring this year, and he's been putting up points for this team. He's their leading point getter, and right there, you can't give him that much time. Uh, he finds a spot there on Dustin Wolf, and it's a beauty wrister, and it's one nothing for Washington. And then in the second period, the Flames uh, short-handed here, and it would be Max Pacioretty who finds Alex Ovechkin in front with a quick tip there for his 20th of the year. There was really not a lot going on on this power play for the Washington Capitals. The Flames had done a nice job, but they get a little bit mixed up here. A few guys staring at the puck. Obi standing wide open in front and they get the puck to him and he makes no mistake and Dustin Wolf doesn't stand a chance on that goal and there he is. He knows how to put it in the back of the net. <laughs> there he is and we haven't seen the last of him because a few minutes later on another power play there's Obi setting up in his office and uh, they know where to find him. They know where he's going to be and there he is and he will blast home his second of the game. Another tough one for Dustin Wolf. Yeah, start. and it's not, that wasn't, that definitely wasn't Alex Ovechkin's best. I've seen him <laughs> no. shoot it a lot harder than that, but it actually, it's almost like a little bit of a change up and it, it was rising on Dustin Wolf. I'm not sure if that goes under his blocker or yeah. just over his blocker, but it definitely was a, a little bit of a weird release and not an easy save, but uh, the kid can say, you know what? Right. He's seen it now. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. It was kind of fluttering. I agree with you on that. Uh, but then the Flames get a spark. We were waiting for a spark from them. It's the fourth line. Uh, Pahal, a little bit of redemption there, throws it on net, and Kevin Rooney puts it in for his second of the year. Yeah, and redemption for Pahal, because I think he was in the box for both of those Ovechkin goals. So joining the play, he gets up here. Matthew Coronado leading it, finds him, and uh, didn't have a lot on it that one, but it got to where it needed to be. And Kevin Rooney, I thought this fourth line, you know, did a really nice job for the Flames tonight. They provided their spark early, and they get rewarded here with a goal. And we thought this would spark the Flames a little bit, but it was, in fact, Washington who gets another one here. And like we said, kind of just disjointed another broken play, and it's in the back of the net. You don't see goals like that very often. A fluttering, just keep an attempt by Milano here. It's on his backhand. And then Lapierre on the old one hopper just chops it in the top corner. And again, Dustin Wolf got to be a little bit frustrated with this. Couple goals in that first, in those first four that he can't do anything about. Mm -hmm. Uh, lots of time left, though, in this hockey game. And in the third period, it would be Mackenzie Wieger who is given a ton of time. And he will just rip that one past Charlie Lindgren to make it 4-2. to two. That was not a blueberry muffin, that one. <laughs> I've been bugging him all year. Uh, he's had a lot of great little plays where he's shooting for tips. But he was putting that one home, and he absolutely wired it. 
And one of the better Flames, I would think, in this one as well. Uh, the Flames, of course, pull the goalie trying to uh, close the gap in the score, but Tom Wilson uh, takes care of that and gets the empty net goal. So, uh, yeah, like I said, 5-2 disappointing loss for the Flames tonight. Yeah, they just didn't have enough off the start. They had one, two lines going. It wasn't mm -hmm. everybody out there tonight. And at this point in the season, if you're going to collect points, you got to have everyone going. And it didn't. I didn't think the Washington Capitals were a whole heck of a lot better, but no. they were just very opportunistic. And obviously, you can see where their strength lies. Um, they get opportunities on the power play, and this this team has known how to cash in for a long time, especially old number eight, and he definitely tilted the scales against the Flames tonight. Yes, and he cashed in twice like we just showed you. Uh, Dustin Wolf is standing by in the dressing room to talk about some of those goals. It's a performance as a group and maybe your own tonight. Yeah, I mean, we just couldn't find the back net a couple more times. Um, you know what, they got some, some skilled forwards over there and obviously a guy that's chasing history and buried a couple. And, um, you know, it's, uh, again, a learning lesson for myself and, and the group. What do you think you, you'll take away from, from a game like this? I mean, every time I get a chance to be in there, um, you know, it's, it's reps of, you know, understanding traffic, how I can, um, you know, better see pucks, um, you know, manage my depth and, um, you know, just ways that, I can continue to translate my game from the American League to here. You have first-hand experience now just about uh, Ovechkin, that slot, that position, his office. Maybe from your vantage point now that you've faced it, what did you take away from it? Yeah, I think he only really had um, one or two good opportunities, and the you know, one happened to hit right out of the stick and, and go upstairs. But um, you know what, that's a hell of a hockey player over there. And you know, he had, he had a couple of good chances, but um, you know, it's pretty cool to, to say he stopped a few. <laughs> No shame in being a victim of Alex Ovechkin. <laughs> 147 yeah. goalies. You're the 147th. Please let a goal in by him. Yeah, well, I'm sure there will be a couple more. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know what? It's it's pretty special to play against a guy like that, and um, obviously didn't get the result, but yeah, you know, that was pretty fun. Are you the kind of guy who, when you're playing, you're like, I have to be better than the guy at the other end? 100 percent. And um, you know, give that guy credit. He he made some outstanding saves and. Um, you know what? That's that's the nature of the league. Every goalie in this league is is really good, and um, you know it's just an opportunity for me to come back next time and, and try it out my game. If this is your last game on this call up, how will you look back at this latest you know call up? I think I'll be pretty pleased. Um, again, reps are you know reps, and um, not a few outstanding outings, and you know definitely some some things to build on, and um, you know a couple areas where you can always improve. Yep. Thank you, sir. Okay, so we were saying a lot of those goals against Dustin Wolf looked uh, like he was a little bit helpless on them. They were tough, tough, weird kind of bounces or whatever, but he's kind of just shouldering some of the blame there, saying he couldn't find his net sometimes, maybe his depth was wrong. Uh, but he, like he said, you know, he's coming off two excellent games. Tough one tonight for him. Yeah, we can't forget about his last couple of performances and uh, the teams that he beat. Yeah. Right? You know, you take down the Vegas Golden Knights and then I just thought start to finish against Montreal, he was rock solid in the net. He Some of those high shots that, you know, fall down at a goalie's feet, he did such a nice job of covering those, jumping on those early. We see a few highlights here tonight. He had a really nice seal on that Wilson wraparound. So, you know, it's you got to remember how young this guy is and uh, figuring it out. He's only got a few games at the NHL level and he's done a heck of a job so far. And it's nice to see him take responsibility for his actions. He's talking about improving. And uh, you know what? You want a good team player like that that's backstopping you. And uh, Dustin Wolf said a lot of good things tonight. Absolutely. Uh, Mackenzie Weger scored the second goal for the Flames. It's his uh, 16th of the season. He is standing by now in the dressing room to chat about this one. Uh, I thought five on five, we were, we were good. We were a good team. Obviously, they, you know, they got a good shooter on that side. Let them get open a couple of times. Lucky bounce on the one, but um, I thought, you know, sometimes, you know, we got some momentum, and I think they did a good job at shutting down our momentum. So, um, yeah, I, I thought it was a good game. We could, just couldn't find the back of the net at some, some points, but tough, tough loss. How, uh, how do you think you guys did? You knew how desperate. <clears throat> yeah, you know, we were prepared. Um, we knew, obviously, that their power play has been hot. 
for a while, we knew that they were in obviously sort of the same position as we were. Um, I wouldn't say they were necessarily desperate, more desperate team, um, because I thought we did play a good game five on five. And they obviously got some, you know, good, good bounces on the power play. I thought our power play, we needed to get one or two there for sure. Um, but I thought our compete effort were there on five on five. Like moral victories from these from these games, or you're saying five on five, you played really well. Do you, you how do you tr go about extracting that those victories? From yeah, I don't know. I don't know about if it's a moral victory, but you know we can keep keep reiterating the positive five on five. Um, you know, I keep doing the same things five on five. I thought maybe just get you know a little grittier in front of the net, maybe make it a little harder on the goalie. Um, things like that, that's probably where we need to be more desperate. But um, like I said, you know, it was the power play, a couple of power plays for them that gave them momentum, and they did a good job at shutting down our momentum. You look forward to a little breather in this schedule. It looks like you, you guys haven't had three yeah. or four. Yeah, I mean, it doesn't really matter to me. It's obviously, you know, a good break for if guys are, you know, hurt or tired or, you know, want to get their energy back and whatnot. But, you know, for myself, I, we just keep rolling. I don't care. Thanks, guys. There's Mackenzie Weger who uh, got involved tonight with a goal, and you were saying the Flames have such an active defense. They're always trying to score, right? They're always trying to get involved. Uh, Shillington had a couple looks in the first period. Uh, Rasmus Anderson had a bit of a, a rush there, but they just couldn't couldn't capitalize on their chances either. Yeah, and a lot of the shots early that the Calgary Flames decor tried to get through were deflected, and even here at, at, as the game was at 4-1, you got Mackenzie Weger, he's right in front, just can't quite find the handle on that pass from Kuzmenko. If he gets this clean, that's that's a goal. And we're going to see one more opportunity here as well. Rasmus Anderson, he's got Sharon Govich, that's a tap in as well, and he just misses his stick. I don't know if the if the Washington defender gets a little piece of him, but you know what? Number four was involved, number 52 was involved. You had Miramanov, who's got an absolute bomb of a shot mm. from back there, just couldn't quite find the mark. We saw a miss. We saw a big save by Lindgren on Miramanov towards the end of the third period. So um, they've generated a lot of offense from the defense this year, and it wasn't for lack of trying against that. Right. He just didn't quite convert. And Miramanov, uh, I, I mean, I think the Flames are hoping he can get that power play going, right? We saw the shot tonight, but they still can't seem to get any consistency with the extra man. Yeah, and just again, you've got... The score is four to two, and yeah. you've got a power play with four minutes left, and you can all of a sudden really tighten up that game, and they just couldn't get anything going, and unfortunately, that's been a bit of the story this year for the Calgary Flames on that power play. Right. Uh, another uh, bright spot in this one, we'd have to say, is the fourth line. Kevin Rooney, who got the scoring in this one. We were looking for that spark from the Flames. Uh, he came through with it, and they were, they were pretty good all night. We noticed them all night, that fourth line. Yeah, him and Greer were being pests out there, and Matt Coronado, I thought, was hard all, all over and on the puck and uh, resulted in a goal for that line um, a little later on in the game. But just overall, they were pretty consistent right from the drop of the puck. I would say the most consistent line for the Flames tonight. And I believe Kevin Rooney is in the dressing room, or do I have I Okay, all right, let's hear from Kevin Rooney in the dressing room. Obviously, was it the result you wanted? What did you see as the difference tonight? Yeah, I think he's spot on. I mean, special teams got beat tonight, and yeah, saw it on the scoreboard. How tough is it to defend Alex Ovechkin from his office? I mean, so many teams have gotten victimized from that. Like, how tough is it to be out there? I mean, we got a game plan in place, and we just got to execute. And, you know, it's on the penalty kill guys to do a better job. You know, myself right up there, so. What part of the game plan there maybe was missing tonight? Not missing from the game plan, but what part didn't you feel like you guys executed? Well, especially on their, their second goal. They got into the zone way too easy, and um, you can't give them the line like that. We had a game plan on how to, how to stop them there. And then, you know, obviously a lucky bounce off in the shot lane. But, you know, I think we could have done a better job as forwards of maybe sliding over there and anticipating that a little better. Original 16, a great way to celebrate things done well. Flames 
suffer a 5-2 loss to the Washington Capitals, and part of the reason is because Alex, Alex Ovechkin was able to score two goals tonight. He has 21 tallies on the season now. He's not having the greatest season, not quite what we're used to, but he was effective tonight, and that uh, power play goal certainly uh, didn't hurt his team. No, he knows how to score, and he showed that again tonight. He knows how to find the little quiet areas. And here you catch a few Calgary Flames puck watching tonight on the power play, and they slip it to him, and it's an easy tap in. And then there's his office. Number eight, he scored I don't know how many goals from that spot. Um, we've even tried in the past shadowing Alex Ovechkin and taking him away, taking away that shot. And What's that like? Sometimes <laughs> it's... Uh, almost a waste of time because then you're you allow the other guys to pass it around and I remember when they had Backstrom out there on the ice and you're really limiting yourself so it's a, it's a fine line with trying to make sure you're in front of that yep. shot or not allowing that shot but then with the other high skill on this team um, that power play you know it's been together it's a different looking unit now than it than it was traditionally like yep. maybe five plus years ago but again they they still know how to score and it's usually through number eight it's amazing how long it has worked like that right maybe maybe not as sharp or as crisp but whatever he yeah, still scores even when he doesn't have his best stuff yep. i mean it's just it's almost for a young goalie like dustin wolf and you know that the shot is coming and you're anticipating it, but to get there and to have the right timing yeah. to make that save, I mean, it's it's never easy for a goalie. Yeah, to see it is one thing, to stop it is another thing. Uh, Flames coach Ryan Huska is speaking to the media right now. Let's hear what he has to say. Your thoughts on the game, Brian? Um, five on five, I thought I thought we did some things that, that we liked. I don't think we did a good enough job special team-wise. For, for me, that was the difference in the game. Both our power play not generating anything for us, but also giving them momentum, and our, our penalty kill gave up too. Is it easier said than done to defend Ovechkin when he's in that, that spot? Like, what's he, How does the coach game plan for that? Yeah, I think there's different ways. Um, for us, we try to make it look like that pass isn't available to him over there, and then we trust our D-man to block those shots, and the one that went in tonight went off a Raz and in, and sometimes that happens. What do you think of Dustin Wolf's play? I thought he was okay. I mean, that goal I just talked about, that's a tough one. You're not going to do much with that because of the deflection, but um, I thought he was okay. Everyone talks about his size. That wasn't a factor on his on the four goals allowed, though. Did you see the size a factor on those? Uh, no. Hey, listen, I, that's going to be the narrative all the time. So, you know, it is what it is. The the fourth goal beat him high. Um, one was deflected. One was a backdoor tap in. So, and I think the first one he probably want to have back. Play. Why wasn't? Why do you think the team wasn't able to generate as many chances as they should? Um, that's a good question. I don't think we got into the zone uh, efficiently enough. I thought it was a little bit we were over pass happy early on, if you want to call it that. Where I thought we had some chances to shoot the puck and we didn't, um, and it leads to going back and forth. And if you're doing that consistently, um, you're you're not fresh. So then you're starting to make tired decisions. All good. Okay, thank you guys. Thank you. All right, there you have it from the head coach who pointed to special teams, of course, as being the difference tonight. Uh, and it's true, the Flames have had trouble on the power play, but they're usually pretty good at killing off penalties tonight, not so much. Yeah, and it's, I thought their application was pretty good. Again, Ovechkin's shot was not his best, but still found a way to get in. And then just a little bit of miscommunication on the uh, backdoor goal for Ovechkin. So, um, you know what, it's, it's uh, generally decided, though, most NHL games when it comes down to special teams, and it's just those one or two plays that can really shift momentum or, or earn a team a victory like the Washington Capitals tonight. And so uh, it'll be back to the drawing board for the Calgary Flames. They'll sharpen up on that uh, penalty kill mm -hmm. and continue to work and get the power play trying <laughs> to go. Sooner or later, they will figure it out. Uh, they have a couple days off now, some well-earned rest, I would say. They've had a, such a busy schedule over the last few weeks. A couple days off, and then at the end of this week, they will be off to Vancouver for their next game on Saturday night. They will be back here at home versus Buffalo on Sunday. We will see you back here uh, then, Sunday night.